I'm Mark Caulfield and I'm here with Patricia Munro and we're at Barts and London Cardiovascular Biomedical Research Unit here at the William Harvey Research Institute at Queen Mary University of London. We'll be describing today the major findings that we're publishing on the 11th of September 2011 in the journal Nature and Nature Genetics. In particular, our work on genetic variants identifying new genes for blood pressure and cardiovascular risk. High blood pressure affects 1 billion people worldwide and is a major risk factor for stroke and heart attack. Indeed, approximately half of all heart attack and stroke is due to high blood pressure. By 2025, there will be 1.5 billion people with high blood pressure. So it's 4.5% of global disease will be due to high blood pressure. And this is a major cost to economies around the world managing the disability caused by heart attack and stroke and of course it causes bereavement in families by the loss of loved ones at a premature age. The causes of hypertension have remained somewhat elusive. We know that genes are responsible for about 30% of blood pressure variation but very important influences arise from our lifestyle. So for example individuals who eat excess table salt or sodium salt in their diet, who drink excess alcohol or who have elevated body weights can have high blood pressure. High blood pressure can also be influenced by lack of exercise and a diet that's poor in fruit and vegetables. So far the hunt for the genes that are implicated in blood pressure regulation has been challenging. In 2004 major changes in our understanding of the genetic makeup, identification of variations about every 300 letters in our genetic code and uh, a dense map of those throughout our genome has allowed us to develop with technological advances new chips which can contain up to a million of these variants uh, in our genetic code and we can type those in individuals combined with a clear understanding of the layout of the genome and advances in computer uh, technology, we can combine all of these modalities now to scan the human genetic code comprehensively. So 2009 really seen the first um, um, exciting findings in blood pressure genetics and this was mar largely due to large meta-analysis of genome-wide studies from the global BP Gen Genetics Consortium and Charge Consortium and they found 13 new genes for blood pressure. Following these success stories these two consortia came together and formed the International Consortium for Blood Pressure Genetics, GWAS Consortium. We performed a meta-analysis in up to 70,000 individuals of European ancestry from 28 different populations, and these are indicated as the little stars on the map. Looking at 2.5 million genetic variants across the genome, there are a number of SNPs which were interesting, which we decided to follow up in larger numbers. So we were able to do some validation work in an additional 130,000 individuals of European ancestry. And then once we had our final results, we were able then to ask the question, are these genetic variants also important in blood pressure in groups of other ethnic ancestry? And the yellow triangles just indicate where these other populations came from. Following the discovery analysis, we took 27 single nucleotide polymorphisms and then we used a stage design to follow these up for validation. And this was done by direct genotyping these SNPs and also doing lookups in the 130,000 individuals of European ancestry. This led to us discovering 25, 29 SNPs associated with blood pressure. 16 were novel and for this study for systolic and diastolic blood pressure and we validated 12 of the 13 previously published. So here you see in a table format the main findings that we are describing today. The uh, table shows on the left hand side uh, a number of gene names uh, that identify the most plausible or the closest gene to the single nucleotide variant that we've associated with blood pressure. To highlight just a few, here we report the solute carrier of, uh, SLC4A7 which causes exchange of bicarbonate in the kidney and manages acid base. In addition, we report elements of the natriuretic peptide nitric oxide system, which has previously been implicated in blood pressure regulation, but these are different elements of that system. 
This is of importance because this is eminently amenable to targeting for new therapies. Another interesting discovery is the adrenomedullin gene locus. Adrenomedullin is a vasodilator peptide in our bodies and this can open up blood vessels. These are the major findings. Uh, obviously of great interest is that the majority of the things that we've discovered are not actually known systems for blood pressure regulation. So this poses the opportunity for us to identify new systems implicated in the architecture of blood pressure and also for new potential therapeutic targets. So after finding 29 SNPs to be associated with blood pressure in individuals of European ancestry, we also then wanted to know if those same SNPs or an aggregate of those SNPs were associated with blood pressure in groups of different ancestry. And to do this, we set up collaborations with lots of other groups across the world, and we were able to recruit very large numbers of South Asian, East Asian, and African individuals. We then created a genetic risk score combining the effects of the 29 SNPs from the European individuals, and we tested this genetic risk score for association with systolic and diastolic blood pressure in each of these other ethnic groups, and it was significantly associated with blood pressure. We also found for some single genetic variants, these were associated with blood pressure in individuals of Indian Asian and East Asian descent. A crucial question is whether the discoveries that we've made influence the damage that hypertension causes. So using the same genetic risk score approach, we combined all 29 variants and found that they were significantly associated with risk of stroke, with coronary artery disease, and changes in heart muscle thickness and hypertension risk. This was very reassuring. Interestingly, we did not find an association with risk of kidney damage. This could be explained by the fact that kidney damage is both a cause and an effect of high blood pressure. So also published today by ICP's GWAS Consortium is a second paper in Nature Genetics. Here we report four new loci for pulse pressure and two new loci for mean arterial pressure. So to conclude this presentation, the ICPP GWAS consortium has discovered 22 new loci associated with blood pressure. If we look at the new and the previously discovered loci, they still explain only a small percentage of the phenotypic variation of systolic and diastolic blood pressure. However, they do provide new blood pressure genes and once further work is done, we will know more about the biology of blood pressure and hypertension. And of course, these new genes also offer us opportunities for developing new therapies for treating cardiovascular disease. Finally, we would like to, of course, acknowledge all of our co-authors and members of the ICBP Steering Committee. And these next few slides indicate all of these authors, also including Sushil Hawkins, who works at the William Harvey Institute with us. Finally, we'd like to thank everyone who contributed to the study and especially all of the funding bodies without whose help none of this work would have been possible. <laughs>